to the book of Daniel tonight. Daniel chapter 11. And we're going to cover a, uh, just a, a two things tonight. Um, I think most people, even, even the world, uh, has heard of the Antichrist. Uh, we'll look at him for a little bit, but we'll also look a little bit at the uh, tribulation. We're not going to go into detail, but in Daniel chapter 11, as we get down to verse number 36, it begins talking about uh, the, the uh, end times. First part of the chapter talked mostly about um, the past kings and the rulers of the, of, uh, the Middle East over there in, uh, around Israel and India, Iran. And uh, that's, that's those are the kings of the past. And now as we get to verse 36, we're looking to the future, our future even. Not, not just the future of Daniel, but our future. And so we, we're going to look at uh, verses 36 through 45. So let's read that. Let me just read that, and then we'll uh, come back. Verse 36, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver, and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. And at, that, and at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the, upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But she, he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. So we see uh, this is talking about the Antichrist, as we will we'll see other passages about him. Um, when we talk about Antichrist, it's... Simply anybody who is against Christ is anti-Christ. Go over to 1 John, 1 John chapter 2. And what John says is probably the, um, the strongest verse that um, is in the Bible that calls this person anti-Christ. Other words, we'll look at the other uh, other names that he is called uh, in a little while. But look at First John chapter two and verse number eighteen. He says, "Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time." It's interesting. We look. When did approximately when did John write this? How long ago? Close to 2,000 years ago. And he says, because there are many antichrists at his time, he says, we know it is the last time. So 2,000 years have gone by, so how, how many years is the last time? Uh, it's just so close, we don't know when Christ is returning, but there are many antichrists in the world today also. There have been people uh, who actually called themselves uh, the Christ. 
that have said we that they were the uh, I don't know if they said reincarnation or the incarnation of the Messiah. Uh, you've probably heard of Sun Myung Moon. Maybe you've heard of him. Um, who was the other one? Uh, I can't remember right now. N another one that I saw, oh, Jim Jones. Jim Jones. And um, yeah, those uh, you young people don't know who Jim Jones was. <laughs> Good. Um, but uh, he acted like he was God in the flesh, when in reality he was against the true Christ, anti-Christ. So before the Antichrist comes into power, he is, he, is, um, he is revealed. Go over to first, uh, actually, this is what's going to happen before the Antichrist comes. Go over to, uh, comes into power. First, Thess first Thessalonians chapter 4. When we look at the, 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 the uh, future, when we look at what we call the day of Christ, the day of Christ is not one day, it's a period of time. And uh, the day of Christ begins, I'll say, uh, when, the, when Christ returns to take us to be with him. And that is what we call the rapture. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, look at verse number 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now who, who are the dead in Christ? Believers who've died, right? Those, and I, I have heard, and I've told, I've mentioned this. Some of you haven't heard me say this, but uh, I'll say it again, just for those who haven't heard me. There are people who say that this says the dead in Christ. So we're not talking. This is what other people say. We're not talking about Old Testament saints. Uh, well, how is anybody saved? There is one name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So how were the people in the Old Testament saved? Through the blood of Christ. Now their faith wasn't in Christ himself because they didn't know that, but their faith was in God that God was going to save them, and he was going to do it his way. So their faith in God uh, gave them salvation the same way we have it. Christ's blood paid for our sins, and their faith put them in a proper relationship with God. And we see that in the life of Abraham. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So the dead in Christ are all people who are born again, who are saved. That's what it's talking about. So the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We talk about rapture, and the word rapture is not here in Scripture, but if you take the Greek word and translate it into Latin, we get something like raptura, caught up. So that's where we get the word rapture. And the rapture itself really is only about people who are alive at the time Christ returns. Although... All others who are born again, who are dead in Christ, will rise from the dead. Okay? And in a sense, they will be caught up. But uh, when he says, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. So that's what it means, rapture. Okay? So that's going to happen. Christ is going to come. The world is not going to see him when that happens. Uh, and we don't want to say it's going to be invisible because when millions of Christians disappear, the world is going to know something happened. Okay, so the rapture is coming. Um, look over at um, Revelation three. There are people who say, I haven't, I haven't mentioned the tribulation. The great tribulation is a a time of. Uh, uh, Many things that are that are going to happen during that uh, that period of time. That are uh, lots of people are going to die on the earth, and it's a horrendous time. But it's God's wrath that is being poured out on the earth um, for many reasons, not just for sin, but for the way the people treated Israel. 
Um, in the Bible we'll see it. it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, look at verse number uh, 10. Because, now he's talking to a church, the church in Philadelphia, and he says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So the hour of temptation, this, this difficult time, it says, he says, uh, to try them, and it's going to come upon all the world. He's talking about the great tribulation. And uh, he's telling the church of Philadelphia, and he tells us, it's not about us going through the tribulation. God's not going to pour out his wrath on us because we are born again. He's going to take us up and then his wrath is going to come onto the earth for that period of time. Um, the Bible talks about this period of time. We talk about the tribulation. And most of you know about it. How long is that tribulation? What do we usually say? So we usually say seven years because it's after the, the Antichrist is revealed. And then it's a seven year period. But... Really, the, the tribulation, the great tribulation part, is the second three and a half years. And we'll see that. Uh, Daniel, we looked at this um, this morning a little bit. Go back to Daniel chapter 9. And we looked at this, this particular passage having to do with um, the wise men when they came, uh, how they figured out the timing what is happening? Why is this star in the sky? What is, is God showing us something? And going to the, the scripture, Daniel gives them uh, this period of time, these 69 or, or 69 weeks from the time. Well, let's read it. Um, in verse, uh, where did I go? I'm not, I haven't turned back to Daniel 9 yet. Verse 24, he says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. What's the holy city? Jerusalem, okay? Uh, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. How, are, how, are the, how is the end of sins taken care of? Jesus died on the cross, and the people are still going to sin during this time, but Jesus brought the, the truth and brought the, the f destruction of sin in what he did on the cross. So he's, he's saying here that in 70 weeks, it's going to come to a complete end and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So who's the most holy? Christ. <laughs> it's anoint the most holy. Now look at verse 25. Now, remember, verse number 24, he says, 70 weeks, okay? Then he says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. Now, who gave the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem? Anybody remember, remember the name of the person? It was in the Babylonian captivity, and it was one of the kings that said to the Jewish people, go back and, and rebuild Jerusalem or build the temple. Cyrus. Cyrus. Cyrus did it. And so we know when Cyrus did it. So he says, uh, unto Messiah the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. How many is that? Seven weeks and three score and two. 69 weeks, okay? Now, why is it broken up into seven weeks and three score and two weeks? I believe it's the first seven weeks. Remember, the weeks are seven-year periods. So the first seven weeks are 49 years. That's approximately how long it took them to build the temple. You look in the New Testament, and it says uh, it took 46 years. And uh, there might be some time in there where they uh, they had to stop, and different things could have happened. So it's about 49, 49 uh, years. And then there's another three score and two, which is 62. 
He says, the streets shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. And when you go back to the books of uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, you see that there was a lot of trouble trying to get the, the wall built under Nehemiah's time and the temple built during uh, Ezra's time. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Now, what does that mean? No one will be able to become a Christian. Okay, af after that... Uh, Actually, it's not. It's it's not that. It's it's meaning that Jesus will die on the cross, and uh, there is a time when nobody's going to be be able to be saved again after after uh, a certain period of time. God says that's it. And usually, right in that, uh, we look at the uh, the uh, tribulation time where people will be deceived and not come back to the Lord or come to the Lord. But Messiah shall be cut off. Then he says, but not for himself. Remember, I think I mentioned that this morning, that he died for us, not himself. He died for our sins, not his sins. Um, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The people of the prince that shall come. Who is that? People of, of the Antichrist will destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. So Daniel points out how long it's going to be, but when we, when we look at these things, he says it was 70 years, but all we can account for is 69 years. So there's 69 weeks. I'm throwing my I'm using the wrong terminology here. Uh, he says there are 70 weeks are determined, but he only gives us what's happening in 69 weeks. So there's a week missing. And scholars have called this the 70th week of Daniel, which we, ha we study the scripture and we're going to look at it. We'll take that week and put that future when the Antichrist is revealed and he basically takes over the world for this period of time. Go over to Matthew chapter 24. You know, there are there are people who who thrive on studying this future things, the future the study of the future is called uh, eschatology. And, and they, they just love studying this, but that's all they get out of it is just studying it. But really, why would, we, why would we study this to see what is going to happen in the future? Well, to think about, I wouldn't want to be there. So really, I don't want my friends to be there. I don't want anybody to go through this. So the more people we get through our ministry of reconciliation to the people of this world and preach the gospel and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, more of them will come to faith in Christ and they will be caught up with us. So the more we present the gospel, the more we know they won't go through this. And so when we learn these things about what's going to happen, it should prompt us to have a greater desire to see people saved. Matthew chapter 24, and look at verse number 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So who, we talked about this, I think, uh, maybe last week or uh, earlier, the abomination of desolation. Some people believe that was Antiochus Epiphanes, but Jesus says, when ye see it, when ye shall see the abomination of desolation. So is that past or future? That's future, even from Christ. But Antiochus Epiphanes uh, desecrated the temple earlier than Jesus Christ, before he was born. And so he's not talking about Antiochus. He's talking about the Antichrist, uh, the abomination of desolation in the temple. Let's go on here. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye 
that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation. Now pay attention to what he says here. Great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So, whatever happened before this great tribulation that was as bad as it, nothing. Nothing after this is going to be as bad. We can, we can look back and see that these wars and the, the Holocaust when millions of people were killed uh, in the World War II, people are being killed around the world now, uh, whether it's for their faith or just because somebody doesn't like them. But this tribulation is going to be worse than anything ever that it was before or ever anything that's ever going to be after it. So it's a great and horrendous tribulation. And, it, and it's in, you, we, we can go through the book of Revelation and see all the things that happen and all the people that are killed and signs from the, from the sky, planets and stars falling. They're not, not really falling to the earth, but they go out of the sky. God is going to destroy the universe and the earth, heavens and the earth, and basically start over again. And so uh, those things are going to happen. We called, we saw in uh, Daniel 9, it said, the prince that shall come. Uh, let's go back here because there's a, something important here in verse number 27, Daniel chapter 9. It says, the prince that shall come. And then in verse 27, it says, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. How long is a week? Seven what? Days, right? So he says it's seven days. So in, in the passage we're looking at, a week is seven years. The word um, 70 weeks, the word weeks uh, does mean... Um, sevens whatever sevens it is it's not it's not talking about seven items uh or any particular items it's not talking about days but it's talking about seven so it's 70 sevens which when you look at the whole scheme of things are it's got to be years and so he says he'll confirm the covenant with many for one period of seven years one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. When you look at those words here, he says, uh, overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. What did Jesus say? The abomination of desolation. So here the Antichrist makes a covenant uh, uh, an agreement to say well, I, he's not going to, we're going to have a peaceful time. You heard about this peace that they had down here of, in uh, Israel just in the last week it seemed like they uh, a, a, a truce or a peace. I thought I heard that they said for 60 days I, I've heard that in the past they, somebody, two, uh, two countries who are uh, fighting or say okay let's just have a ceasefire for and they'll do it around Christmas time too and say okay let's stop for this period of time. And then what? Go at it again. Well, why stop? Just keep fighting. <laughs> but but he makes a covenant with Israel. Notice what, he's, what it says here. Um, uh, I, guess, I guess I... I thinking of something when it says says the overspreading of abominations, he should make it desolate. He, we're talking about the temple. We're talking about the Jewish temple. And so he makes this covenant with the Jewish nation and they have peace. And he says, we're going to have a seven year peace. But in the middle of the seven years, what's he do? He tells them no more sacrifice, uh, no more oblation. And then he causes the abomination of desolation be, to be set up in the temple. And it's probably him. Uh, the abomination of desolation. The Antichrist, as we saw in uh, John, uh, the idea that there are people who are against Christ. Jesus said there will be many uh, false cr 
Christ. Go back to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, again. And now look at verse number 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. False Christs coming with powers that normal people don't have. Signs and wonders. And they're not signs and wonders from God. Since they're false Christ, pseudo Christ, uh, their power comes from probably whom? Satan. And they will deceive many people. And so those false Christs have come, and there are going to be more of them. Well, the Antichrist is not just any other false Christ. This is the one who comes and is becomes a world power. We've seen him in Daniel already. I'll go back to Daniel chapter 7. As we looked at the um, dreams that Nebuchadnezzar had, we saw the vision that uh, Daniel had. And Daniel says this in chapter 7 and verse number 24. He says, and the ten horns, now he's... Uh, um, hearing it from God's messenger, and so Daniel is telling us, and the ten, uh, the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So the little horn comes up after uh, these ten kings, kings or ten horns, another king comes up and subdues three of them. This is the Antichrist. Verse number 25, and listen, listen to what he says, what, he, what kind of person he is. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. That's against God. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. <laughs> what is that? A time and times and the dividing of time. Three and a half years. One half of uh, that covenant that he makes with the, the Israelites, the Jewish people. Go to Daniel chapter 9. We already read it, but look what he says, verse 27. He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease in the middle of that week. In the middle of the th seven year period, that means three and a half years. So he's going to be ruling for those, well, for seven years, but he's going to look like a wonderful guy who is, is uh, taking care of the world, bringing peace to all the people of the world, and say, oh, wonderful man. And then all of a sudden, he's going to boom. He says, stop. Now he's, he, he's in control. And there have been people trying to figure out who the Antichrist is and was for a thousand years. And some people said it was the Pope, and they proved how he was the Pope. And the Pope turned around and said it was this guy and these guys. And they tried to figure it out, and, and they come up with numbers and letters of their names and all kinds of things. God knows who's, who it is, and we may know the person. We may recognize the person even today, but he's not in power today. When he comes into power, we will be gone. And we can look forward to that. We can be grateful to God that He doesn't have us go through this tribulation period. Go over to Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two and look at verse number three. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away. What is falling away? 
Anybody know what it what it's talking about? The word is apostasy, and sometimes if we don't if we don't think about it, we don't look up the up the word and try to figure out what does it really mean. Apostasy does not mean somebody who just doesn't believe. It means a person who is religious, I'll say, and then turns away from the Lord. That's apostasy. They apostatize and they go back away because they don't want any more of it. And you've probably met people who have been to church and they used to go to your church or something and, and then finally they just say, I'm, I'm tired of it. And they go their own way. That's apostasy. So they're first they'll be coming a falling away or an apostasy first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now I'm going to look at, I'm, I'm not going to come back to this verse later, but we'll look and, and see other names for this Antichrist. And here's two of them right here. The man of sin is going to be revealed, and he is also called the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. So let's break that down for a second. Who opposes God, and he exalts himself above God. Who in the world does that now that you know of? Satan is all is just Satan. No man right now that we know of, but this man will. And he's going to lift himself up. And Satan did that. Uh, and that's why he's in his trouble right now, because he said, I will be like the Most High. Um, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So pick a God, and he's going to say, I'm better, I'm more than that, I'm greater than that false God, and the, the tr that, uh, greater than the true God, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God. Now there's the abomination of desolation, showing himself that he is God. Now, this is not saying that he is God. He's showing himself to be God. He's declaring himself to be God. He is not God. But here, as when he says showing himself that he is God, he's lifting himself up, saying that. Now go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 and verse number 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. How long is that? Three and a half years. Thirty-six plus six. Forty-two months. So again, three and a half years, and this is the, the Antichrist who is coming into power. The other names that we want to talk about, I mentioned man of sin, son of perdition. In Daniel chapter 11, we won't turn there uh, again, but it's uh, he calls him the king that shall do according to his will, meaning he's not going to listen to God. He's going to do things the way he says it. Revelation chapter 11, he is called the beast. And I think a lot of people know him as the beast. And then, of course, Daniel 7, we saw that he was the little horn, the Antichrist, the one who lifts himself up above God, the one that is getting his power from Satan, the false authority that he has uh, in the world. Go over to Jeremiah chapter 30. We talk about him being in, uh, in charge, ruling the world to a certain extent during this great tribulation. Jeremiah gives us, and I, I mentioned it earlier, and you probably don't remember what I said, but uh, what he says about this time of tribulation Chapter 30, look at verse number 5. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see, whether a man doth travail with child, 
Now, this, uh, <laughs> I know this. This sounds like what the way people talk today. Uh, a man is going to is it, can a man travail with child? No. Okay, but the, the reason he says it this way is because what men do here. He says, wherefore, or why, do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. You see, you see the picture? This, the, the, the trouble in this world at this time, it's like everybody's holding themselves and just, oh, I, can't, I can't handle this. And there's places where the Bible says that they are, the men are calling upon the rocks, the mountains, to fall on them because they don't want to go through this horrendous time. And this is why it's so important that we recognize this is a very awful period of time, worse than anything that's ever been on the world. And, and so he says, this is what's happening. Why do I see this? Well, because he says, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. There it is. None before, none after. And he says, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. The time of Jacob's trouble. God judges the Israelites, the Jewish people, during this time. And, uh, of course, the, the Antichrist hates the Jewish people. Of course, they're all, all over there hate the Jewish people for who knows what. Uh, but, the, but the Antichrist is going to be against them. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble. We read what Jesus said in Matthew 24, that the people shall be delivered. Uh, look at Daniel chapter 12. In Daniel chapter 12, the, um, the first three verses continues on in the talking about the tribulation and the end of... Uh, uh, and basically the rapture, the time when we are resurrected or we are caught up. Verse number 1 in chapter 12 of Daniel, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be... By the way, I, I want to stop just for a second and, and point out that uh, there are... There are uh, Seems like it's the Jehovah's Witnesses who think that Michael is Jesus. Okay, Michael um, uh, in the Bible talks about Jesus, but if you if you consider who Jesus is, God in the flesh, uh, here we you can't you could say that this is the the great prince which standeth up for the children of thy people. Okay, if you just had that and you say that's Jesus, okay, that would make sense. But to say Michael the great prince. Michael is not Jesus Christ. A place in Daniel, and we're not going to go there, but Daniel prayed, and um, he didn't get anybody, uh, he didn't get an answer for three weeks. And the reason he didn't get an answer for three weeks is because the messenger, the angel from God, uh, was um, sidetracked. <laughs> he said, well, sidetracked? Well, he had to fight a battle against Satan over the land of uh, Iraq, or about... Um, Persia. And so he was hindered from coming to Daniel when Daniel prayed. But he said in that in that that account that angel said while I was there fighting this battle Michael came to help me. Now, if Jesus came to help him, how fa how long would the battle last? Over, right? It didn't. It took two, three weeks, and so Michael had to battle these the the evil angels also. So uh, Michael is not Jesus. Michael is not the Christ. Michael is Michael the archangel, and so that's that's the point I wanted to make here. Okay, then he says the great prince which standeth up for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered. Who are thy people? The Jews. Thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life, okay? And again, these are, these are pictures for us to understand 
what God is, is telling us. Does God need a book that has papers in it and he would have to turn papers? No. God knows, but it's for us to get a good picture of, of what is going to happen. Um, and many, verse 2, of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Did you know you are right there? You're, you're mentioned right there. We are. They that turn many to righteousness. That doesn't mean each of us turning many people, but we who work together and see others come to faith in Christ. He says... Um, we will shine as the stars forever and ever. We'll live forever and ever. And we won't have to go through this horrible tribulation. Christ is returning. Christ will return. He will gather us up as his children, as uh, his brothers and sisters. We are joint heirs with him. And we will live forever. He's with him. He said, where I am, there ye may be also. So when he returns, we go to be with him, and we will forever be with him. Yes, we will return to the earth after this seven-year period, this tribulation period. We will come back and reign with him, the Bible says. We will be his servants ruling over the world with him. He's the, uh, the king, and we will be ruling with him. God tells us all these things so that we can open up our mouths and speak. And that right there, that verse number three, tells us that we are to be showing people and telling people uh, what God has done for us, and that we don't have to be punished because Jesus Christ was punished in our place, and we have eternal life already now we are saved and we will go to be with him we don't have to you know we'll have troubles now but Jesus said you'll have troubles in this world you'll have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world so even though we go through these minor things we look ahead and we have glory with Jesus Christ forever and we won't have uh, the trouble anymore all right, let's stop right there, have a word of prayer, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you give us these promises that we will not be uh, going through this terrible time of tribulation. We won't have to put up with the Antichrist himself. Lord, it's, a, it's bad enough that we have to put up with uh, Antichrist now and uh, people who don't love you, don't know you, uh, are against you. But Lord, thank you that we will not go through the tribulation period, that uh, we'll be uh, caught up to be with you and forever to live with you. Guide us now, Lord, help us uh, as we finish up the service. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.